class now we are going to look at the inversion of intervals okay so what is inversion of intervals that's basically when we just flip the two notes around so i've written um, this interval on the board so it's a perfect fifth and um, so it's f to c so what we do is we're either going to put the the bottom note above the top one or the top one below the bottom one so if I just move that one up, it's going to look like this. Or alternatively, what I can do is also to move the C down and then it is going to look like this. Either way, let's just fix this note, which is crossing the line. And our notes are not allowed to look like that. So um, let me see the proper example for you guys. Okay, so um, it doesn't matter whether I do it this way around or this way around. You can see that the difference between this interval and this one is just an octave. So you're going to get exactly the same effect. Okay, so that's basically what happens um, when we invert an interval. Now let's see what happens to the name. So this is a perfect fifth. And if I look at this interval, it's C to F. And we regard the bottom note as the, the tonic of a major. So we, we ask ourselves, does C major have um, an F? And the answer is yes. So if the answer is yes, it's either perfect or major. But because it's a fourth, we know that it falls in our group of perfect intervals. Okay, so this is going to be, once it's inverted, it's going to be a perfect fourth. Okay. Now... You can follow the long route of working out the interval every time from scratch or you can know the cheat. I'm going to do just one more interval for you guys and I want to do D to C flat. So I want you now to just pause the video for a moment. I'm not sure if you can do it with a live video. But I want you to pause it and I want you to just quickly see if you can work out the, the distance and the quality of the interval on your own. Okay, so I'm going to do it now um, for you and you can just check if you got the same answer. So the easy part is that this is a seventh. Okay, and now I regard the bottom note as the tonic of a major. So I ask myself, does D major have a C flat? And the answer is no, it's got a C sharp. Okay, and because it is an interval of a seventh, we work with our group of major intervals. Okay, so D to C sharp is a major interval. Semitone lower to C is minor. And then to C flat, another semitone is diminished. So this is a diminished seventh. Okay, so let's see what happened to it when we invert it. So what I'll do is I'm going to just put the C flat at the, at the bottom and then I have the D there. Okay, so you can see that this is an interval of a second. So now we ask ourselves, does C flat major have a D? The answer is no, it's got a D flat. C to D flat is a major second. So now it's C flat to D, so it's a semitone bigger, so that would make it an augmented second. Sorry, I'm squashing that in there. Okay, so there is an easier way than this to just quickly work out what the interval name and its quality is. So let's just first have a look at the quality. Um, Whenever we have a perfect interval, it when we invert it, it's going to remain perfect. If we have a major interval, it's going to become minor or vice versa. Okay, So if you have a minor interval, it's going to become major. Then um, if you have an augmented interval, it's going to become diminished or vice versa. And that's exactly what we had over here. So we had a diminished 7th and once we inverted it, it became an augmented 2nd. Okay, so that is how that works. 
and then just in terms of the actual interval there's also a cheat for that and you'll see that I wrote out um, my octave here so it's um, 1 to 8 so what happens is once you invert a fourth I'm going to start here I, I'm in the middle so if I invert a fourth it becomes a fifth or vice versa a fifth will become a fourth and that we had in this first example so we first had a fifth and when we inverted it it became a fourth okay then a third will become a six or vice versa a second will become a seventh and that we had in this example and then a unison would become an octave or an eighth and that is basically how the inversion of intervals work.